I'm going to do some periodic maintenance to my ice cream maker. And the reason why was because I made ice cream the other day and it stopped. The ice cream maker stopped. It stopped after it made the ice cream, but it's never done that before. And I thought if it's going to get bogged down making ice cream, something's got to be wrong inside. And I'm guessing that the, the grease in there is just so old that it doesn't have the freedom. It's too much friction. In other words, so I made a cup of coffee for myself. And I thought, let's do a video of me working on my <laughs> ice cream maker. Hey, it might turn out to be a, a popular kitchen vlog. You never know. So let's work on my ice cream maker. So here's my ice cream maker. This is the base. There's the canister that you put in the freezer a day in advance. That goes here. The paddle and the lid goes on. Okay, underneath here, that's where the cord hides. I can pull that all out. You'll notice there are no screws. How do you take it apart? Well, I've seen this before. They hide it under this, these feet. I'm going to pull these out. I have a little parts tray here. This is from a can of sardines. Those little empty trays make great small parts trays. Get my fingernail underneath there to lift those out. And then I got a little flashlight here. There it is. The screws down there. That's what I thought. Okay, Phillips. And then what I have, where is it? It's right here. This is a neat little thing. I've had it for years. It's a little magnet on a little expander thing. But I just need it a little bit. And there's the screw. can take the screw out. Get the other ones out. Okay. And then I should be able to lift this cover off think how does it separate bottom comes off okay I'm gonna put that piece aside get the cord out I'll deal with that later on okay so here's the little gear assembly down inside there I don't know how well you can see it this looks like it's a cooling fan and this is the gear assembly down here and let me get a little probe down there and yeah see that's that's like gum pick that off yeah that's no good that's what that's the problem see it's the grease is all dried out you'd think grease wouldn't but evidently it does and I see three screws this one's going to be tricky because I can't get it straight line, but I think it'll be all right. Let's see if I can get it with this. It's not quite loose enough. Can I go through? I can go through. Go through the fan. Ooh. There it is. Those are a different size, so the three black ones go inside. And then one more. The nice thing about this is if it gets down into a small place where you can't get your fingers, you can use the magnet to get the screw lifted out. Okay. And then... I'm going to disconnect it here. Two wires, both of them black, so I can't tell which one goes where. But that's a female that attaches to a male. And this is a male that attaches to a female, so I can't get those mixed up. And look at that. It comes right out. And this is the other piece. This is the top part. Oh, and there's an O-ring in there, a rubber O-ring. 
Um, I'll put that there, but I'll probably have to grease that when I put that back in. All right, I can set that aside. Right, I've got a rag here. And then I'm going to put that over there. I don't need that. I don't need that. I'm going to use mineral spirits for um, a solvent. It's like a really fine oil, sort of like turpentine, but without the smell. Put a little bit in this little tray, little dish right there, little plastic dish. And then put that aside. All right, I'm going to start working on this one first, I think. Got a pair of old toothbrushes here. One I've cut the bristles back on, so it's kind of sharper. Not sharper, it's stiffer. I'm going to brush this away from me so I don't get all that on my... I wore my shop apron just because I figured that I was going to get some stuff splattered on me. This isn't one of my cooking show aprons. This apron is one that I've got this friend who comes over once in a while. We cook together. Ooh, look at that. That is gummy. Um, and I make him wear this apron. Because he wants to wear an apron when he cooks because he always wears his expensive clothes. I tell him, if you're going to come over to cook, don't wear trousers that cost you $100. Put on your grubbies. But he likes to go out wearing nice clothes. But what he does is rather than wiping his hands on a towel, he wipes his hands on the apron. And it drives me nuts when he uses my good aprons, my show aprons, and then uses them as a towel. It's like, dude. Okay. Um, I wanna make sure I get this really cleaned up. Um, I might give this a good wash to get rid of that mineral spirits because the mineral spirits are down inside the teeth of the gear. In fact, I got another toothbrush. I could soap that up. If this looks like a piece of a sleeve, this cloth, it is. It's just something I cut off of an old shirt and threw aside to use as a rag. Even this is gummy. Okay. All right, there's one. Put that in the sink. I'll wash those. Let's go back to this. Get that out of the way. Does this come off or does this have a clip on it? Oh, it slides right off. Oh, beautiful. I might as well clean this up while I'm in here. That's the motor has a little toothed shaft. Well, okay. I can't say I like that design. A worm gear might have been better, but this has got two gears, big one on the outside, little gear on the inside. Same thing. Scrub it really, really well. Get it all cleaned up. A friend of mine is going to send me a recipe for some mango, I forgot what it was called, it's not a ice cream or a sherbet, sorbet, it's a fruit sorbet, and she says she's made it many times, guests approve, they like it, so I want to do some sorbet, I want to do some, I love orange. So I'm thinking of doing some, oh, look at that, how gummy that is. Do some um, orange sherbet. And I've mentioned in my cooking videos that the woman up the street gives me her lemons off her lemon tree because she doesn't use them. And I'm welcome to take them whenever I want. Look at that, there's even gummy stuff in here. It doesn't matter, it's not where it's gonna cause any difference, but if I'm gonna be fussy, I might as well get in there and clean that gunk out. 
All right, I'm gonna run these over to the sink and spray them down with 409 and use my other brush to get rid of the mineral spirits on there. So I got these clean and dry. They look good. I don't see any gumminess anywhere. Got some machine grease here. This is kind of a different sort of grease. It's not um, like the brown grease I've seen. I don't know what the name of this is, whether it's anything special or not, but when I bought this mobile home, there was a big tub of this out in the shed left behind by a previous owner. I'm going to just make sure there's plenty of it on there. You can't over well you can, you can't overdo it. But I think this grease won't melt if it heats up. So Okay, um can't put that on yet. I have to do this one first. This is that middle gear. Back when I used to work on typewriters the middle one was called the idler pulley don't know why but there was the drive pulley on the motor an idler idler pulley and then the actual pulley that would drive the machine they were step down pulleys because the mach the motor would spin too fast obviously so it would step down the speed Okay. <laughs> I'm feeling good about this. All right, and then I need to grease this shaft well. This goes on there. Which way? This? No. Oh, this goes over here. <laughs> Got to remember how it all goes together. So that goes there, engages with that pulley. And this goes on here and engages with the pulley there. Okay, I want to just check one thing. Hold the motor, turn. It's working. Things are spinning. Okay, put that aside, put a new sleeve down. Um, that attaches to here. And I don't know whether this O-ring has to be lubed or not, but how much damage can it do? If it's the wrong kind of grease, I know it'll eat the rubber of the O-ring. I think that o-ring is mostly just to prevent if there should be an overflow of liquid prevent it from dripping down into the motor okay to put the motor back on three screws which way does this go in this way I think it's this way nope got to be there because that lines up with that little thing there there it is all right my screws three black ones go on the inside and that's done okay lock these down they're they're screwing into plastic not metal so I don't want to lock these down too tight I don't want to break any plastic or strip anything. Okay, things are going around. The gears are turning. Don't know how well you can see that, but that's what I want to see. Okay, um, don't forget the wires. This is 
got to go here because it's the male to female and this is the female to male. I'm going to do one thing. I'm going to plug this in and hopefully it won't spit sparks at me. Let's see what happens. It's working. Sounds nice too. It sounds a lot quieter than it did before. Nice. Really nice. Okay. Unplug it. And then, before I go any further, Put the lid on the grease. I'm done with this. Put that away. Have a sip of coffee. And then, let's see. Run the cord back through the bottom. And this goes on right here got to go there beautiful and I guess all I'm going to do here is just drop the screws down in there yeah it must have I can feel it tightening up put the feet back on no parts left over that's always a good sign grease on there one more time I'm gonna plug this in I'm gonna plug it in over here shorter reach uh. there it is it's working little thing is going around it sounds good it's quieter. Hopefully it's straining a lot less. That's it. This cord kind of just gets folded up onto itself. And then kind of bent in half and tucked inside this little well. And that's the cord storage right there. My ice cream maker did my maintenance. Hopefully this will serve me for another 20 years because I have some things to make. Sorbet, some lemon sherbet from my neighbor's tree, from her lemon trees, orange sherbet, things I want to make. So there it is. I did my periodic maintenance on my Denny brand ice cream maker. I don't know whether I bored you to tears or whether your jaw is hanging open at my awesomeness <laughs> but you never know what you're going to see on my kitchen vlogs maybe next time i'll spay a dog who knows thanks for listening if you haven't already subscribed please do so and tell others about it